Okay, Ed, we had a question or two about the Oldsmobile 455 and some of the oiling and how that works. And you told me you had one. You have one to show us. I have one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Something going on in the shop most all the time. Some weird fun, fun stuff. Yeah. And we have a lot of fun stuff. So 455 Oldsmobile, this happens to be a stroker one. Yeah. It's got big pistons in it and rods and stuff. And Oh, a race motor, and I think it's out of a boat. Okay. Because I don't know what automobile you'd put in a 455 in any kind of a car that you'd race. Uh-huh. Usually it's a boat or something, a heavy vehicle. So this happens to be this okay. motor. That it's belongs to a customer. Okay. And we'll just talk about it a little bit. Yeah, let's talk we'll about talk about this. the Oldsmobile motors particularly. Okay. Uh, this happens to be a race motor. It has the studs in it, journal studs in it. It has some really weird things about it. Okay. Uh, it has this stud plate that's going to go on here. Oh. A girdle plate. Everything else that reinforces the main bearing. Now, was that factory? No, not at all. Okay. This is all something else, yeah. A big crankshaft. I don't know what the stroke is or the bore of this motor. Okay. It just happens to be one of them in the shop we're building. Uh huh. So, well, somebody asked about oiling. Yes. So, they have a little different things about oiling. You might come over here a little bit. Yeah, I'll come around. Come around, yeah. So on this particular motor, everybody has their own designs. And you see here where the oil goes. And it goes in the oil pump. Oil pumps out of the main bearing. Okay. And the oil goes in this hole here. All right. And then it goes straight over here. There's a little arrow. I put it Goes over to the oil filter. This right. goes straight through that the oil filter. It goes to the filter, then it goes back in the motor here. Okay. It goes back into this oil galley. Uh huh. Then this oil galley goes down to the main oil galleys that services the lifters and rod bearings and main bearings. Okay. So, and this is the same one. It happens to be right through the main bearing hole. This is the bowl hole. Okay. So this goes down here to this oil galley. Got an arrow goes to there. Uh -huh. Then it goes up this oil galley, uh, up to the motor, up to the front of the motor. Okay. So let's come around in the front of the motor. Okay, we'll come around to the front. It would come out this oil galley right here. I see. Yeah. Sometimes automobiles, I think, I don't know if this is here, you look at it, it has a teeny hole in there. It does have a little hole, yeah. Yeah, that's to bleed all the oil, air off. Oh. Yeah. Early Chevrolet 396s, when the lifters clattered, when the first 396 motors came out, General Motors Bulletin says to drill that little teeny hole in there and let the oil bleed off and the lifters wouldn't bleed, wouldn't clack after that. Okay. It lets them set a couple days. So you get an air pocket stuck yeah. in there. So this one here, actually, that little hole is enough to oil the time and chain. Huh. No kidding. Time and chain There's and the, gears or whatever. Right in there. Are. Right. Yeah. Then it goes back up the oil galley here to this pipe, this tube here. Yep. Somebody asked, how come we got so many holes in this? Right. And this one here then goes the same hole here, goes into the cam bearing and lubricates the cam bearing. Okay. And it goes down the other side, so this oil galley goes down the other side then. And this one oils the rest of the oil cam and lifters. Right, all the, the way motor. across. Yeah. So some people think that these holes are too big. Yeah. On the lifter side. We don't want to plug up the ones on the rod bearing side instead of the rod bearing for sure, not and right. the main bearings. Right. So there's there's a kit, some kind of kit that you can restrict these holes a little bit going to the lifters. Okay. And once the lifters are pumped up, they don't need to have a lot of full oil. They just have pressure and a little bit of volume. Okay. So that makes it run good. That's right. a little bit of story about Oldsmobile. And that's a real weird motor. I don't know what another oil motor that oils like this one. Yeah, I've, yeah. so this yeah, is a very Ford's unique going, way to do it. Yeah, Fords that usually go across the back, both sides. Uh -huh. Chevrolet always has. Big blocks, small blocks. Fords do. Oh, yeah, but this is just something peculiar about this Oldsmobile motor. Oldsmobile. Yeah. Huh. About, about what year do you think this would be, this block? This is probably a 455 started out. Yeah. 70s. Okay. 70, yeah, 75. I don't know what Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And I know this motor here has got some grinding going on. Uh -huh. It's got bigger pistons and stuff. Here's one of the connecting rods. 
This is a gorgeous rod. It oh. looks like it's got a big connecting rod, eight stream rod. Wow. A nice set of pistons here. All this stuff is really expensive for an Oldsmobile. Right. Probably twice as much as it would be if it was a Chevrolet. Okay. okay. They don't make many of these. Wow. That looks like it's a thousand or something. Yeah, it's, it's really a nice set. Wow, so that's all lightweight. It's be, yeah, it's going to be a big, big bore motor. Uh huh. Uh, probably a different stroke and stuff. I don't know what the crank. It probably needs a. Would you think it'll be a custom crankshaft too? Yeah, probably would be. Yeah. Uh huh. It looks like some some expensive stuff. Expensive. Hey, we'll put this together here in probably another two or four days. I don't know if they're waiting on parts for it. Right. They waiting on bearings or something. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, as long as someone had. Checked and asked about that. It was nice yeah. to give an answer like this. Yeah, especially a motor like this that we can talk about. Right. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. yeah.